I'm the Genius Asian. Welcome to the Genius Family. Today, I am going to show you how to load test a battery without buying a load tester. More than a year ago, I published a video using a load tester to diagnose the battery. We use this battery tester to apply load. The battery is discharged at 100 amps to estimate the battery's ability to provide the current needed. Start to apply load and watch the voltage drop. If you don't have a battery tester, you may use your voltage meter to see the voltage change once you add some load. If the change in voltage is too fast, you can videotape it and then play back the video on your computer to see the voltage falling rate. To view a YouTube video frame by frame, you first need to use the space bar to stop the video, then use a period key to forward a frame or a comma key to back up a frame. Notice the voltage drop to form a V-shape. Let's collect four values from the video so that we can estimate the health of the battery. We repeat last year's video to demonstrate those four values. V motor equal to 9.43 volts and is the voltage when you, when you first heard the starter motor's noise. We use this value instead of an initial value because only when the starter motor starts working do we have the highest load on the battery. The next value is Vmin, minimum voltage, which is the lowest voltage, in this case 6.39 volts. Fall time is the time from V motor dropping to Vmin. Rise time is the time from Vmin rising to V motor. From these values we compute two values. The fall rate is this, equal to V motor minus V min over the fall time. The rise to fall ratio is equal to rise time over fall time. This was a successful start because I revived the battery after using a charger. Now let's compare this with a failed start before recharging. See, this is a failed example before recharging. The voltage dropped to 5.45 volts, lower than the 6.39 volts in the successful case. Now it is more than a year later. Let's repeat the test again. We pay attention to Vmin, fall rate, and the rise-fall ratio. I use a cell phone stopwatch to easily measure the time when replaying the video. This time it started, no problem. The Vmin is high enough, even though the fall rate is higher. I turn the high beams on and drained a little bit more power. So, we'll start again. The Vmin dropped to 7.76 volts. The rise-fall ratio is small, so the battery is still working. I continue to use the high beams to drain power. Now the V motor is 8.63 volts, and the motor doesn't turn over at all. I turn the high beams off and wait a few minutes for the battery to recover to 11.5 volts. Crank the motor again. The battery dropped to Vmin 5.53 volts. The car failed to start. The Vmin is still low and the fall rate is still high. I will charge this battery for one minute to see if I can find the threshold. It dropped from 12.42 to 7.08 but the fall rate is still too high to start. Let's try one more time. Still, the fall rate is too high. The label on this original battery shows 14D, so it is about six years old. Also notice, the cold crank amp is 390 amps. I could charge the battery again to reduce the fall rate but the fall rate is unlikely to be reduced to smaller than two. This six-year-old battery is going to fail more and more often. It is time for a new one. Let's look at the brand new battery with a date of November 2020 and CCA of 640 amps. I will connect the battery with a jump cable. The voltage drops from 11.3 volts to 8.03 volts a very small rise-fall ratio. But notice that the jump cable resistance made the fall rate similar to an old battery. Remove the jump cable and install the battery. 
12.27 volts drops to 10.99 volts with a small fall rate and small rise fall ratio. This Audi Q7 drops from 12.24 to 10.13 with a small fall rate and small rise fall ratio. Let's use the exact same battery to test a different car, a Lexus ES350. This is the result. The fall rate is 3.98. Recall that the same battery on the Subaru with a jump cable was 3.33, a similar result. This is the case in which it fails to start. Maybe the jump cable introduced too high a resistance. Let's see another successful case with the jump cable. The Dodge Caravan old battery drops from 12.54 volts to 10.72 volts with a small fall rate and small rise fall ratio. Audi Q5 drops from 11.98 to 10.10 .10 .10 with a small fall rate and small rise to fall ratio. From these sets of data from different cars and different batteries, we notice that the weaker battery's V shape narrowed and moved towards the left. To have a better reliability, you should aim for Vmin greater than 9.5 volts, fall rate less than 3, rise fall time less than 1. Please leave comments below to provide your data so that we can cover more different cars and batteries. I will consolidate and present data at my website. I recommend taking a 10 second video like the one shown here when you don't have a battery problem so that when you do have a problem, you will have a reference point. You can also use your high beam to add load. However, the maximum current generated from all lights could be only 60 amps. It may not be high enough of a load. When we don't have load, a full battery at 80 degrees Fahrenheit temperature should have 12.6 volts. When charged at 75%, we have 12.4 volts, etc. When the battery is not full, as you are charging, you will notice that the fall rate would be reduced. A more clear test is to use a hydrometer to test the specific gravity for the acid of the battery. That way you would know for sure if you should stop charging. This $10 hydrometer can test the specific gravity for the acid of your battery. It answers one and only one question. If the meter shows the specific weight is too low, that is, it's in the red area, then you need to keep charging. As you keep charging, the density of the electrolytes increases, which means the specific gravity of the electrolytes increases. The greater the concentration of sulfuric acid, the more dense the electrolytes become. If it reaches the green area, your acid has enough density and you can stop charging. So the hydrometer can tell you whether the electrical energy is converted fully into chemical energy. A load test can tell which battery is relatively weaker under load, but only a hydrometer can precisely tell you if the battery is charged fully. The lead acid battery has two components, lead plates soaked in acid. The hydrometer can tell us the capacity of the battery but due to other bottlenecks, this capacity may not release high enough current during the first 10 seconds of cranking. If the effective lead plate area becomes too small due to sulfation, it may not provide high enough current during the first 10 seconds. We said earlier that to view a video frame by frame, use the period key. Note that it is not the greater than sign, even though the symbol greater than is printed on top of the period. If you have a shortcut key for greater than, it will forward five seconds instead of a frame, so use the period key. In addition, YouTube videos can be played at one quarter speed, slow enough to allow you to see the cell phone stopwatch changes. Of course, there are thousands of other video players or apps you can use to view a video frame by frame. Share this with people who you know that need it. Leave your own genius tips in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm the genius Asian.
subscribe for more useful videos.